Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all having fantastic whatever time of day it is in your part of the world. This is one of the rare occasions where I'm actually doing a review during the day. So I've got a little bit of free time, so I thought why not. This is a Norwegian thriller. It was released in the year 2011, Norwegian language, English subs. Directed by Martin Tilden. And this movie is called Headhunters. Now this is actually based on a novel, so I haven't actually read the novel. It's much the same sort of, um, you know, based on novel movies such as the Millennium Trilogy. And actually a few people uh, who were behind the scenes in this film were connected to the Millennium Trilogy. So if you like that Swedish um, trilogy, then chances are you'll find something in this Norwegian thriller. So the story to Headhunters is as follows. Roger Brown appears to have it all. He is Norway's most successful headhunter married to a beautiful gallery owner and owns a magnificent house. But he is living above his means and he is stealing art on the side. At a gallery opening, his wife introduces him to Klaus Greva. Not only is Greva the perfect candidate for a position that Roger is recruiting for, he is also in possession of the Caledonian Boar Hunt by Rubens, one of the most sought-after paintings in modern art history. Roger sees this chance to become financially independent and starts planning for his biggest theft ever. But soon he runs into big trouble, and it's not financial problems that are threatening to knock him over this time. So Roger Brown, he appears to have it all. He is a middle-aged man. He has a very successful job as a headhunter. He recruits these people that he feels are best for certain positions in companies. And he has a beautiful wife, and he owns a very big house that is very expensive to keep up. So on the side, to get a little bit of extra money, he is into uh, stealing art. He's a very, very accomplished thief. He goes into a lot of planning. He has a partner who works in security. So it's a very, um, it's a very, very dedicated sort of um, thieving business that he's running. Uh, they're very professional in what they do. So they're very careful in what they're doing. They're stealing a lot of art. They're getting a lot of money. And then into the movie is introduced this guy named Klaus Greva. Now Klaus Greva, he is a perfect candidate for a headhunting job that, um, uh, sorry, Roger Brown, I forgot his name for a minute there, that Roger Brown is after. So he's a perfect candidate and not only is he a perfect candidate for a job uh, vacancy, he is also the perfect candidate to steal some art from because he is in possession of a painting that is worth billions and billions of dollars. So Roger sees this as a perfect opportunity and it seems to be going along smoothly until Roger realises who Klaus Greva is and what his past was like. And it turns out that now Klaus Greva is after uh, Roger Brown for reasons that uh, Roger thinks he knows, but as the movie progresses, uh, more and more twists are thrust into the, the story that keep you guessing. So what happens from that point on is a game of cat and mouse between Klaus Greva and this Roger Brown guy. So if you want to know how the movie unfolds, please go out there and see it for yourself. It is a movie that has a lot of twists, so I don't want to give away too much, but hopefully I've done a good enough job at making the film at least vaguely um, clear. So yeah, now my thoughts on the movie. Went into this one with huge expectations. Not only is it a Scandinavian film, yes, Scandinavians have been very well known for making great thrillers, uh, but you know, for an Australian, uh, for a foreign movie to be released in Australia, it's very rare that it gets a lot of hype. And this one did. It was even released in uh, uh, rental shops here in Australia, which is uh, again very uh, rare to see. So uh, you know, a lot of I think a lot of the popularity behind this film is centered around how popular the Millennium Trilogy, uh, trilogy was. So the girl with the dragon tattoo, girl who played with fire, girl who kicked the hornet's nest, really showed that foreign films can appeal to an English-speaking audience. So I actually think that that set the standard, and that's why Headhunters comes with a lot of praise, because not only was it based on another very successful novel, there were people who worked on the Millennium Trilogy who worked on this. So expectation levels very, very high. I went into it, I finished watching it, and I can say that all Although it didn't disappoint me, I felt that it didn't really match the hype that I was actually expecting it. I put it onto a very big platform that just didn't quite reach it. But having said that, it is definitely a, a thriller that I am highly recommending, recommending because the majority of the film was very good. Now, to start with, the atmosphere to the film reminded me of a French noir film. Now, French noir, uh, you know, it's aimed at a very select audience. Uh, not everybody's going to uh, appreciate film noir, but the movie, although it's not a film noir film, I actually felt that it had that sort of artistic flavour to it. Uh, it's a very 
uh, visual film. I thought the visuals were very well done. It's a very colourful film, uh, but it's a very uncomfortable film uh, at the same time. Music, the soundtrack was very well done. I thought it helped contribute to the thrilling scenes that the movie had. And the acting, very good. I thought the main character wasn't likeable at the start, but when this main uh, this main character has to go through what he actually goes through, you get a connection with him because you feel really sorry for him because his world has been turned upside down. And uh, there is some part of you that says he deserves it because he's a criminal, but then other parts say that you know no one deserves what he is, has in store for him. So character development wasn't great, and the characters weren't overly likeable, but I thought the director did a good job at forgetting all the hate, uh, the unlikable qualities in the main character and feeling sympathy for him based on the situation he's facing. A very thrilling film. I thought the thriller set pieces were very well done, very good chase sequences, uh, some pretty heavy violence in there as well. There is one scene in particular involving a car crash. I'm not going to give it away. It's very gory, so the aftermath was really sickening. And there's also a sickening scene involving a pit toilet, so I'm not going to give anything away on that. But there are scenes in the film that will shock you, and gore hounds will get something out of it, and uh, uh, lo uh, lovers of shock cinema. Um... The continuity, the pacing, very good. I thought it kept me guessing all the way through. There's a lot of twists right up till the very end, which I really appreciate, and I'm sure a lot of you out there will appreciate it as well. And so all of these things, it really should have contributed to a masterpiece. Unfortunately, it's not a masterpiece because of where a lot of films get hurt, and that is in the ending. While I'm not going to say that this is a typical Hollywood ending, I would have liked it to go a little bit uh, different. Uh, I would have liked it to go down a different path, especially, you know, Scandinavian cinema. Having said that, I do feel that uh, the the negative uh, or the the morbid sort of endings are a little bit bit of a cliche at the moment, and you kind of expect it from foreign films in particular. So it, I, I guess you could say it is a welcome change. Uh, it's not what you think, and right until the end, you'll be left guessing. So that's something I can appreciate. And as a result of that, although it's not a perfect film, although you know I actually feel it kind of loses its tension about three quarters of the way in. The majority of the film is very well made, and as a result, I'm giving it 4 out of 5. Definitely a film I recommend if you enjoyed movies like the Millennium Trilogy, or you like Scandinavian films in general. So, 4 stars, definitely worthwhile, but I just felt that it was a little bit overrated, and it didn't quite meet the very high expectations levels that I had. But having said that, yeah, it's still a very good thriller, and a welcome addition to anyone's foreign cinema collection. Alright guys, that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, take care of yourselves, keep watching movies, and I'll see you later. Bye.